afternoon. Will you join me in a moment of silent prayers? Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us, even now, in our next breath, and in the next. Remain present with us as we align ourselves with your spirit. Amen. Words cannot begin to express how happy we are to finally have you here to see some old faces and see some new faces, but to gather here in this space, in this moment in time. So welcome. My name is Andre Williamson, and I am the new manager of chapel programs for Religious Life. Um, I started working here actually at the beginning of June, Um, but just before that, I graduated from Wake Forest University in the School of Divinity um, with my master's degree. So needless to say, I was literally sitting where you are now just a few months ago. But since I've been here, I've been listening and watching and waiting and thinking and interacting with faculty, staff, and other students. And one thing I've noticed in particular has been preparation. But the kind of preparation I'm talking about, I believe, is is very similar to what the writer of John talks about in the Gospels. The 14th chapter and third verse of John says this, When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am. Another translation says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and welcome you into my presence so that you also may be where I am. So I want you to know that I have been preparing for you. In the presence of God, we have been preparing for you so that we could welcome you into yet another place where the presence of God rests and dwells and can be found. Now, as I was preparing for today, I I said to myself, I can't just welcome you to worship. But I was also moved to challenge you as well. So with that being said, I challenge you to bring your minds, to bring your hearts, your spirit, bring your passion. Hmm. On the other hand, bring your curiosity, your skepticism, and your clarity Bring all of your doubts, bring all of who you are into the classrooms, into this space to challenge and be challenged, to listen and to think critically, to speak boldly and to add to what you believe and even take away from it. I challenge you to find truths, to make people, including us, tell you the truth. Because the bottom line here is... The future will be what you decide to make it. And whatever you decide, we will all, on some level, participate in creating just that. So again, I say to you all, welcome to worship. Hey guys, what's up? We are uh, Collision, and we're going to play a song for you to start things off. So would everybody please stand and sing, Help Me Find My Own Flame. I don't want to ride on somebody else's passion. I don't want to find that I'm just dry bones. I want to burn with unquenchable fire. Deep down inside, see it coming alive. I don't want to ride on somebody else's passion. I don't want to find that I'm just dry bones. I don't want to burn with unquenchable fire. Deep down inside, see it coming alive. Fire, deep down inside, see it coming alive. Help me find my own flame. Help me find my own fire. I want to burn with unquenchable fire. Deep down inside, see it coming alive. Help me find my own flame. Help me find my own fire. Deep down inside, see it coming alive. Help me find my
see you down inside, see you coming alive. I don't wanna ride somebody else's passion. I don't wanna find that I'm just struggles. I wanna burn with unquenchable fire. Deep down inside, see you coming alive. Help me find my own way. There's no better time, 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 there's no better time. Help me find my own way, help me find my own fire, I want the real thing, I want your burning desire. I want to burn with unquenchable fire Deep down inside, see it coming alive Please remain standing for this invocation because we're going to sing one more song in just a moment. Hi guys, I'm Caitlin. I'm the Vice President of Catholic Campus Ministry. If you guys will all please bow your heads and pray. Dear Lord, as we start a new year and our new journey, please give us the patience, strength, and wisdom to persevere and make it our own. Amen. Hi everyone, I uh, hope everyone's having a nice night. Uh, my name is Alec, I'm part of the chapel choir, and I'm going to be introducing your hymn today. Uh, so uh, if everyone could please pick up your hymnals and turn to uh, hymn number 577, God of Grace and God of Glory. Uh, so if you haven't been to choir before, if you have, you know what I'm gonna say, but if you haven't, welcome. And uh, so for this song, we are, we'll be singing four verses. The first verse, we will all sing together. The second verse, all the ladies will sing. Only the ladies, not the men. Because the third verse, all the men will sing. And then we'll join together, uh, we'll all join together for the, fir for the fourth verse to finish off the song. And we'll remind you about that when we get there. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share very quickly just a, a really pro uh, thought-provoking um, idea about this hymn. Um, it is considered a prayer in which we ask for God's wisdom and courage to face the problems of our day. We beg for God's power, we confess our fear and pride, and we can affirm a desire to seek social justice. So um, if you, I encourage everyone in this room to sing, and I want to see everyone's lips moving, even those way up in the balcony. So even if you don't know how it goes, just try, get those lips moving. Please join in singing God of Grace and God of Glory.
and campus ministries, and they're all going to introduce themselves this moment. We take 15 to 30 seconds, uh, so introducing yourselves. Uh, and when they're done, uh, if friends, family, you're here, uh, we're going to have them gather in the middle, and we're going to come lay hands on them. Well, hello. Uh, my name is Bobby Ann Gordon, and I'm with College Life Ministry on campus. We are a branch of Young Life, and basically what we are is we are a club that just hangs out all the time. It's called a party with a purpose, should we say, because we like to have fun, and we basically meet every Wednesday here at 8.30 in the chapel basement, and we play games, silly games, messy games, and we sing songs, and then there's a little talk. So basically we're just a Christian organization who, like, we want to make it known that we love the Lord, but we also love each other. So we're a very solid community of people who want to just love each other well. Um, and we also just hang out all the time. So like, if you ever see like a large group of people that may be kind of annoying and loud on campus, it's usually us. So sorry about that. That's college life. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Meredith Green, um, and I'm an AmeriCorps VISTA I'm with High Point University. Um, the AmeriCorps VISTA program, um, VISTA stands for Volunteer in Service to America. Um, and there's eight of us who are High Point alums, um, and we're all over High Point um, working with food security and educational support. I'm working with an uh, organization on Washington Street called PNAC. Um, so if you guys want to come and volunteer with us doing after-school tutoring, we'd love to have you. So come talk to me after. <laughs> Hi, um, my name's Aurora. I am a Bonner leader here at High Point University. I work with Meredith. Um, I work at PNAC and we um, address um, tutoring in the program and um, we do over 300 hours of community service each year. Hi guys, long time no see. Um, so, <laughs> uh, my name is Alec again, and uh, uh, I'm part of Chapel Choir. So, Chapel Choir is the main, the main uh, uh, choir for the chapel, hence the name, and it's a lot of fun. It's a really great group of people. We have a really strong choir this year, although we do need guys with low voices. Like that's like a necessity. So if you guys are interested, I'll be downstairs with a sheet to sign up. But yeah, just come talk. Hi, uh, my name is Maggie, and I'm with a campus organization called Campus Outreach. And um, the purpose of our organization is that we seek to glorify God by building up laborers um, and spiritual leaders on campus. So we have Bible studies that we'll be doing throughout the week, and we might knock on your door to see if you're interested. But we also have a big group meeting that happens about every month that you guys are more than welcome to attend. So um, we just really want to build up strong leaders for Jesus and then go out and spread his name. Hi, everybody. My name is Chloe Headley, and I'm a representative from Interfaith Dinner Club and Interfaith United. And I'm basically here to tell you a little bit about it, and it's going to be a dinner club or a meeting where we come together to celebrate the differences between and the similarities between religions and different faiths and different belief systems from across the world and across campus. And we will discuss those thoughtfully. We have conversations, meals, and we basically spend time together celebrating those differences, but also... Um, uniting among them. 
Hi, I'm Allison. I'm the president of Alpha Phi Omega, the co-ed service fraternity on campus. We're founded in the principles of leadership, friendship, and service. And we're not actually religiously affiliated, but we're dedicated to doing service to the community and to our chapter and to the campus. And we also go on alternative break trips to like Costa Rica this fall and San Francisco this past spring. Hi, I'm Maddie. I'm from the Board of Stewards. So our purpose is to help with chapel and put on chapel every Wednesday. We also meet as a group every Monday in a Bible study and prayer and just kind of meditate on the chapel sermon. So yeah, we'll be explaining a little bit more about the Board of Stewards. I'm Chris Franks. I teach in religion and philosophy and I'm here as the pre-ministry advisor. Um, in that role, I give support to students who are um, discerning a call into ministry by um, procuring scholarships and helping them find out about seminaries. But one of the things that we do is build community with pre-ministry students. So we have gatherings. Um, we have a monthly uh, book study that where we're doing a really cool book this year. I encourage you to check out called Resident Aliens. And uh, we also do service and other cool activities. So if um, that might be you, um, check us out. Hey guys, I'm Johnny. I'm the vice president of the Civitan Club here on campus. Uh, Civitan is a service-based organization that does as much as we can to help the greater High Point area. Uh, we have many projects throughout the year. Um, we mainly focus on adolescent uh, developmental and cognitive issues, and we have many dinner feeds over at Open Door Ministries. And uh, I'll be downstairs later if you guys want to ask any questions or anything. Thank you. Hi, my name's Megan. I'm the president of Alpha Delta Theta, the Christian service sorority on campus. Um, we just kind of meet every week and try to promote uh, sisterhood and friendship and leadership and service in the community, try to make ourselves better Christians, um, better Christian women, um, to just try to better the community around us. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Kim. I'm the president of Catholic Campus Ministry. Um, we have Catholic Mass downstairs in Fellowship Hall every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Um, our priest is actually the pastor from uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary Church. And we go on a couple retreats um, each semester and do some service. And we also have some fellowship uh, dinners and uh, small group talks and whatnot. So um, if you guys want to check us out, come down Sunday night. You don't have to be Catholic, but you can come just learn more about the Catholic faith if you'd like. Would you give these folks a round of applause, please? And if y'all come with me and come right here. Um, friends, family, I invite this time as the moment where we bless these folks and because uh, they will be leaders of so many folks on campus. So if you want to come forward and y'all all get in a huddle right here, like a big mass, like one big body, like the body of Christ, right? And Michaela's going to say a prayer of her. If you could all bow your heads in prayer, please. Dear God, I thank you for this group of people. I thank you for the different ministries that you have on this campus. I thank you for how you are using us this year. God, set a fire in us. Set a fire in our souls that we can't contain, that we cannot control. God, may we just go each day wanting more of you, wanting more of your glory, wanting more of your power, and wanting to bring more people to you. God, I thank you for how you will use every person here in front of me now, and I thank you for how you will use every single ministry. I thank you that you are giving them peace whenever they feel stress about school or ass assignments or anything that's in their lives. God, I thank you that you are always for us and that you are always sovereign. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh. Turn it. Go ahead. So some of you may be familiar with the passing of the peace, but if you are not, um, let me just tell you a little bit about it. So the passing of the peace is an ancient and scriptural passage, uh, practice that has given many of us and still gives many of us at least one opportunity to embody the spirit of peacemaking, to invoke love and humility and truth, and to pass it around. So I want to invite all of you to pass the peace of Christ around this room, uh, greeting persons that you may know and, and persons that you may not know. So as you are led, let us share in offering the peace to one another. Peace of Christ be with you.
So again, my name is Maddie. I'm from the Board of Stewards. So every week, um, someone in chapel, someone from the board will come and give a little bit of word about the offering and other happenings in the chapel. So um, for those of you that do not know what the board is, we are a unique organization that enables students to gain leadership experience by organizing and planning chapel and religious life. We function as kind of like a business corporation in the fact that we have meetings every Monday, but we the members of the organization will become your family. We join together in prayer for each other and the campus and other things that are happening in our lives and other people's lives. And we join together to just reach, build each other up. And it's been very beneficial for all of us on the board. Um, so come see us below the chapel, after the chapel today, and learn more about the board and sign up to apply. Also, we'd like to announce that we are having an event on Derby Day, starting at 1230 in the CAF and then it'll go all day with going to Derby Day and then coming back here for some other activities. So if you're interested in that, you can come downstairs afterwards to learn more about that as well. Also, um, every fall, we partner with the Angel Tree Program through Salvation Army to provide local kids um, with Christmas gifts that would otherwise not have any gifts. So in the past years, we've been able to reach 100 kids, and this year we want to reach 150 kids. So we would love to have your partnership in reaching this goal, and you can do that um, via donating through the offering or joining us with prayer to the kids that will reach this Christmas season and we'll also come um, provide you with more information on how else you can be involved in this. So thank you so much for partnering us with us in this goal and being here tonight. Please feel free to sing with us with Good Good Father is the offering. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think they're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I Oh, yeah. 
Please join me in prayer. God, thank you so much for waking us up this morning at uh, a place that we are blessed to call our home. Thank you for giving us another day of classes where we can learn, and thank you for inviting us here where we can hear about you, learn more about what you would have us do in our lives. Um, God, I pray that you would just stay with us not only the rest of this day, but the rest of this semester um, as we persevere, as we look forward to a new year of learning and a new year of walking with you. I pray that you would stay with us today and that you would hear us as we say, say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. I'll be reading our scripture for today, which is from Matthew 5, 38 through 44. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other one also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Good evening. Whoa. Oh, man. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, have you ever, like, been so busy, and then you see somebody you haven't seen in a long time, and you go, man, like, I didn't realize how much I missed you until I saw you? Anybody ever had that feeling? Uh, students uh, who are sophomores, juniors, seniors, that's how I feel about y'all. Seeing y'all over this last couple of weeks has been like just heart bursting open. It's been so good to see y'all welcoming back. First years, welcome here. We're so happy that you are here. Uh, you are in a place that you are loved deeply, beyond your wildest imagination, not just from God, but from a community that's going to love you. So I'm so excited you're here. Um, I'm excited for two other reasons. Andrea Williamson, can y'all give her a round of applause? She's first on the job. Good to have Andrea here. Um, can you give a round of applause to Collision? They've been practicing hard. And last but not least, Marsha, come up here. No, 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 come here. This is, no, this is really important. This is really important. Come here. So I want you all to understand what you're a part of here. We have chapel week in, week out, sometimes small numbers, sometimes big numbers. But you're a part of a tradition here that goes back to the founding of this place. Uh, and I want to introduce you all, not the founding of this place, that's not, not nice. Um, <laughs> um, I have in my office all the bulletins from chapel that go back to the mid-80s. And this is the one from 1989. And Marsha Dills, Dills, who gave birth to her son that year, the first chapel service of 1989 was organist in this service. It may not seem like a big deal to y'all, but like, when you graduate from this place, you'll see the depth and breadth of it and the community that you get to be a part of. And I am just overwhelmed with joy that Marsha is back playing organ with us in chapel. Would y'all give her a round of applause one more time? welcome. Thank you. Um, Matthew 5. This incredible reading. 
uh, this, 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 this reading of high expectations for Jesus' followers, what is a big chunk of the Sermon on the Mount. And I want to focus on one section of it today. Just one section. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go the second also. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go the second also. There's so much in this right here. I was, um, over the summer as I was thinking about this passage, I kept thinking of all, like, the wonderful songs that are, that are walking. I was going to try to do this fun little game where I played music, and y'all could guess the song, but we got we to move along. Y'all got, y'all got classes and stuff. Uh, but there's, there's like, this, this beautiful idea that I get when I hear Jesus in, this, in something like Matthew 5 and with this scripture that we have today. And it's the thing that gets me excited about Jesus, and it's that he's got this different kind of rhythm. He's got this different kind of melody. And it's something different than what the world's got going on, but he's traveling through the world in this different way that like just catches your eye and your imagination, and you're like, I want to have that kind of rhythm. I want to have that kind of melody. Like, think about this from, from Matthew 5. Like, if you, I hope y'all study this over the next couple of weeks. But like, it begins with the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are blessings. And how we talk about blessed is like, hashtag blessed, things are great, you know? But like Jesus, he's a, he says, like, blessed are the meek, for they inherit the earth. And he says, like, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Ah, isn't that amazing? We would say, like, blessed are those who are full and satisfied. But Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. I mean, like a different rhythm. And then next week, I'm going to talk about what this, what does it mean if someone strikes you on the cheek and offer offer them the other one? We misinterpret this all the time. But still, nevertheless, who does that? Who offers the other cheek? And then today. If someone forces you to go one mile, go the second. Go the second. Um, This this passage today, as I see with Jesus, what he often does is we have the world like this, and then he turns it upside down with this different rhythm. He offers us a different way of being in the world. If someone forces you to go one mile, go also the second. Now, there's a couple interpretations from this, right? Like, you may have heard it. If you ever played on a sports team, you would have heard a coach just say, like, dig a little deeper, go the extra mile. It's a good interpretation. It's in there. It's a possibility. It's like kind of grit. It's like this kind of having this mentality. There's first milers and there's second milers in this world. I had a buddy after graduating college. He said, my goal is to do the bare minimum and to get through with life. It's been about like 10 years since graduating college now, a little more. Oh my gosh, it's been more now. Y'all say the same age and I get older. See, this, is, this it isn't fair. Uh, but he's still doing about the bare minimum. There's one milers and there's two milers. I've got this little tag uh, on, my, um, on my computer that says, Preston, you're not that busy. And it's always a reminder that there's a little bit more that can be given. A little bit more time that can be given to somebody. A little bit more that you can do. Let's try this. Um, raise your hand the highest you can. Go ahead, raise it all the way up. Now take it a little higher. There's always a second mile, isn't there? You like that? That was fun. That was President Quivain's thing I saw him do one time. I thought it was pretty cool. You're always like a little more you can go. Like we think we might be empty, but there's always a little more. And like Jesus beckons us to go a little farther. You might call this the growth mindset mentality of the second mile. I know. But it goes, oh, so we're not done there. We're not done there. Keep going. So the text. If someone forces you to go one mile, go a second. If, no, it's not someone. If anyone forces you to go one mile, Go the second. This is why the Bible study is so amazing. Digging into this text. It's not about anyone. It's about someone. Jesus would have been given this, the Sermon on the Mount. He would have had mostly a Jewish audience, peasant, mostly poor. And they would have heard this and they would have known exactly what he was talking about. It wouldn't have been anyone. It would have been a Roman soldier. In this time, this Bible time, when Jesus is teaching in what would have been ancient Palestine, ancient Israel, it would have been this law, right, that the Romans had picked up from the Persians. This land is occupied by the Romans, and there was this rule that if a Roman soldier was tired, not tired, he could make a peasant or anyone carry his pack. No more, no less, one mile. During this time, this is what they would call the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome, but it's not really a peace, right? They get to dictate to their subjects what they do. If you don't, you get your knees broken, or maybe you end up on a cross. The Pax Romana. If someone forces you, if anyone forces you, you to go one mile, go a second. 
They know exactly what he's talking about. They're talking about the person who makes them feel small, they're going to go a second mile for. What is that? Isn't that interesting? Isn't that kind of have some audacity in it? To speak to an audience of people who might feel like they're on the underside and say, go the second mile for the person who puts you on the underside. What is that? Here's one thing I think it's about. Have you ever had some baggage that was somebody else's that you weren't supposed to be carrying it, but you were? Some of you know what I'm talking about, right? You're carrying that baggage. There, there's this great line from the, this might be dating myself now too, but did y'all ever watch the Hunger Games, the first one? Yeah, a little bit of nods. Okay, not too off. Oh, so Peta and Katniss, they're looking at the capital, right? Yeah, follow me. Peta and Katniss, they're looking at the capital. They're on top of the city, and they're looking out, and Peta says to Katniss, look at them, and she says, I know. And they're just there in desperation because they're about to go out into the games, the Hunger Games. And he says, you know what? I just wish there was... I was just wish there was some way that I could show them that they don't own me. <laughs> you ever felt that way? I wish that there was some way. There's going to be a lot of things over the course of this year they are going to feel like they're going to own you. And they're not for you. It could be like groups that want them that are not for you. Like Jesus has got this amazing ability to say, you've got to think imaginatively about showing them the ways they don't own you. That you are who you're supposed to be, who you're called to be. Find ways that you can go the second mile. Carry that baggage in maybe an inventive and creative way. And this is the way you do that. This is the most important of all. Because how does somebody go the second mile for someone that is keeping them on the underside? Like somebody who's grinding you down to the bottom. How do they do that? You got to discover a deeper love than you thought you could have. This is what I think Jesus is up to. He wants to beckon us out into the world into a second mile kind of soul-drawn life. He wants to take us on a journey of the soul, that kind of internal reality that we have so that no matter the slings and arrows, no matter what's going on in the world, we can go, we can go the second mile. Some of us get caught between the first and second mile. I think this happens all the time in college, right? You just kind of feel stuck. You know, this summer, um, I was talking with uh, a man who I admire the most, and he told me something um, that, um, that, I, that I thought was very vulnerable and powerful. He was talking about his son going through rehab. And his son told him, um, Dad, they say that you stop maturing. You stop moving forward when you take your first drink for an addict. And he said, Dad, I took, I took my first drink when I was 15 years old. I'm 33 now. I got a lot of growing up to do. Now that might sound desperate to some of you or it might sound completely stuck, but, and it is in some ways stuck between first and second mile, but I also hear some hope, right? Somebody moving into the second mile. It may be late, but they're moving. You may be late, but are you feeling soul drawn to a deeper love, a deeper way of being in the world? Because if you're going to go the second mile, and I think that's what we are about right here and what we do in this place, it's a recognition and realization of a love, of a God, of someone who's gone the second mile on our behalf so that we can go the second mile. And I can't read this passage without thinking of Jesus carrying the cross one mile, two miles, (laughs) being put on a cross, and then looking at the people who put them there, and saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's not just second mile love, that's otherworldly kind of love. And I don't know what it all means, but I'll tell you what, I want to be close to that. I want to be close to that because it makes me better. Like when I feel like I'm stuck between first and second mile, something about that takes me a little further. It raises me up a little more than I thought I could. It makes me the person I'm supposed to be. A journey of the soul is what you are on. And Jesus wants to take you a little further. From the first mile to the second mile. We're going to limp along the way. It's not going to (laughs) be completely a rush to the finish line. But I think that's part of the point. And when I talk to some people who aren't into this Jesus thing or aren't Christians, and a, a common refrain I get back is, is like, it's just a crutch, right? And I'm like, yes, it's exactly what it is. The more important question is, is what makes you think you don't limp? You're going to limp this year. You're going to limp in years to come. 
And sometimes you're going to need to be carried. But there is this soul journey that you're on, and Jesus will carry you on the way to the second mile, on the place that you're going. One of the most beautiful things about the book, the Gospel of Matthew, is it, and this is cool, is the only place in the New Testament, or in the only place in the Gospels, the word is church is used. You can, like, keep that in your notes. Just use that at dinner parties. That's free. You can do that with that, whatever you want. It's fun. But here's the thing. In early, the early Christian community, they weren't called Baptists. They weren't called Methodists. They weren't called non-denominational. They weren't called Episcopalians or Presbyterians or Frozen Chosen or whatever it is. And it's kind of like what we get to do here. I mean, we got people from all across the spectrum. I'm just looking at collision, and it's like Catholic, non-denominational, Episcopalian, I don't know. Like, it's, <laughs> it's like we come from across the board. You know what they were, those early Christians were called? People of the way. Isn't that cool? People of the way. People who have a certain way in the world. People who have a certain rhythm in the world. People who live with a certain kind of melody because they've come in touch with this second mile love, this otherworldly love that rises up in their soul. That's it. That's what we're here to do. So a story to finish with. It's one of my favorite parables. Some of you may have heard it before, but it's a parable by a guy named Peter Rollins. He visited, if you were a senior here, he would have been here when you were a freshman. And he tells this parable of this young woman and she's supposed to save her kingdom who's fallen on hard times. And all the elders of, this ki- all elders of this kingdom are forcing her to make decisions that she doesn't want to make and the, the situation's getting worse. And yet she keeps having this dream. And it's a dream of this, this beggar in the marketplace. And in the dream, this beggar has a, a voice is with the beggar that says that he will have jewels beyond her wildest imaginations, treasures beyond her wildest imagination. And one day she's in the marketplace and she's walking through the marketplace and lo and behold, there he is. And she runs to go see him. She runs right up to him and she, and she tells him everything about the voice and, and what it told to her and, and what he would have. And without ever looking up from her, his stoop, he pulls out a chest from behind him and he doesn't look at her, but he offers the chest up and gives it to her. And she tucks it under her blouse and she runs home and uh, she runs back into her, into her castle and the doors slam behind her and she runs up to her bedroom and she opens up the chest and lo and behold, it is the most amazing thing she's ever seen. Jewels, treasures beyond her wildest imagination. And she closes the box and she puts it under her bed and that night she can't sleep. She tosses and turns all night long, tosses and turns until finally she picks up the chest and she runs out and she goes one mile past the marketplace, two miles, to where the village overlooks the sea. And taking all the courage within her, she takes the treasure chest and she dumps it into the ocean. And walking the mile back to the village, she finds that same beggar. She lifts his eyes to meet hers. And says, tell me of the treasure you possess that you would give away such riches without a single thought. Here's the trick. Some of us get caught up on so many first mile things. We think they're the end, but they're not. Or we think that they're what are going to set us free, but they're not. And Jesus is offering to take us on a soul journey to the second mile. To live with a kind of open hand, to turn the world upside down, starting with ourselves. That if anyone asks you to go one mile, you can go two. (laughs) Because you know there's a God, a love, that's already gone a second mile for you. That's it. We're so glad you're here. God bless you and keep you. We all join me in prayer. Gracious God, we are able to love because you first loved us. And we're on this campus to do that, that we're here to learn, but that education means nothing if we don't learn how to go on a second mile journey with you, how to love deeper, how to be people you call us to be. We're going to go the first mile, we already know that, but beckon us on a further journey, something where we look more like you, for that is our calling. It's in Christ's name I pray, amen. We're about to sing 10,000 Reasons, and if you could stand and sing with us. There's a 
So in a little bit, should I talk in a whisper? In a little bit, um, for first years, we do this thing where we do a benediction response. We've done it for ages, uh, and it's where we sing on eagle's wings and we hold hands. So I just want fair warning, you're going to have to hold someone's hand here in a little bit. A um, couple of things, go downstairs, meet religious life leaders for the expo, free food, lasagna, Matt Goucher in the back will be there, get to it before he eats it all. Uh, uh, check out the Board of Stewards, help be a part of this community. Uh, chapel offering for the future. Be aware of that. It's a big deal. 150 kids this year that could get clothing and toys they wouldn't otherwise get. Uh, Derby Day Party, check that out. It'll be a great way to be involved in, in this kind of community on that day. And then if you're, he- you're going to be here in your first year or otherwise, look to take chapel for credit. It's a great way to get to know folks uh, and get to know the people who are here and you get a credit for that. Um, so with that, will you receive this benediction? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. 
May the Lord who goes the second mile, the third mile, the fourth mile, the fifth mile for you, may he generate a sublime madness in your soul that you can do the same. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.